Hello everyone. Welcome to Snippet Nugget. And in this video, we are going to discuss about the Browsers Developer Console. So Browsers Developer Console is basically a utility or a tool which comes with each of the browser. So it comes with any browser of, of uh, you know, modern day, Chrome, Firefox, Edge, or any, any browser basically. So how does the browser performs as soon as uh, HTTP request is sent from it? So the first step in this browser's, uh, uh, you know, uh, interaction with the network is, it sends the HTTP request to the server, then it receives the HTTP request. Sorry, it is response. I'm really sorry for this. So then it receives the HTTP response. Once it has all the data, for example, medias like audio, video, or images, and some data in JSON or XML format, or some documents in you know HTML format, or some script files. So these are basically resources. As soon as the browser receives the HTTP response in forms of different resources, it starts working on rendering those data or those documents, okay? So this is how the browser performs while interacting with the server. Now, when the browser performs these three actions, we can monitor these three actions in browser developer console. Let us go directly to our browser and see how it works. So I'll just open my um, <clears throat> um, Chrome browser in incognito mode by pressing F12 or right click and inspect element, I can open browser developer console. So in this right side, you can see this is my browser developer console. I can dock it anywhere we want, I want. So let us dock it to the bottom of the page. So now this is my browser developer console. In this video, for keeping it if short and uh, you know limited to, to the beginners or, or intermediary uh, level of uh, audience, okay? I'll just talk about these four first, first four tabs, elements, console, networks, and sources, okay? So this is our browser developer console and we will discuss one by one what we can do with these four tabs. So first we will discuss about the elements tab. We will discuss what is DOM tree, document object model tree, how we can search in this DOM tree using a string search, selector search and XPath search. Similarly, we will look what is box model and how we can see any elements box model, okay? Then we will see that how we can see, explore, edit and update or you know any kind of like deleting and all any CSS uh, attributes, okay, for any of the elements. So we will look all on all, all these topics. Then we will come to the console tab. In console tab, we will see how console tab can be used as a JavaScript inline editor or interpreter. Similarly, how we can see, sorry, how we can uh, you know use it as a logger, console logger, or it can see send our um, uh, warnings and errors, okay. In the same way, we will see that how using the console tab, we can access the window object or the document object of the page. So basically how we can interact with the current document object model, okay? Then we will see about the network tab. And at the last, we will see our source tab. In network tab, we will see about how we can filter our resources fetch what are models, sorry, what are uh, waterfall time charts for each of the resources, how we can disable and enable the caching so that we can test our development process or development uh, you know, steps. And again, we will see how we can analyze the request and response in the network tab. Okay, so please be with me throughout this video to understand all this in one place in one video. So let us start with the elements tab. I'm going to open again my browser. This is my elements tab. In this we can see that here what we are seeing here in left side is nothing but all the elements or all the tags what we have in our HTML source code. You can see here our this is our closure of the HTML tag 
and similarly at the starting this is our starting of html tag so basically this is all html tag plain and simple but during the time of this html source code loading into the browser it also creates document object model or dom tree okay which is kind of a representation of this source code in a javascript readable tree structure okay it is a tree of objects where object represents each element so there are objects corresponding to each element of this source code html source code okay so now we will also see how in this we can map to any particular <clears throat> element so as i click this inspect element i can mouse over on this whole page anywhere and i'll see that okay what is the element corresponding to that particular ui element okay in the same way this second icon is about the device so right now i am working in my laptop and that is why i am seeing this browser in a laptop viewport or laptop you know display kind of uh, uh, fit okay if i'll close this i will i can basically change my device setting so now when i have changed it i can change change among any of this device so for example if i select ipad pro and uh, i will you know just uh, increase this zoom to let us say 100% so what i will see is oh i'm sorry again i am pressing f12 and uh, yeah so this is something what it will what the google page this particular page will look like in an ipad i pro so ipad pro now let us again go back to the inspect element i will unselect this device toolbar i'll go to this let us say gmail okay so corresponding to the gmail this is particular element this is an anchor tag i can also reach this element in this element tab using this inspect so basically i can right click on any of the element and then click inspect so i will reach again if i'll mouse over on this element this is like uh, you know in the ui i can see it highlighted in blue color now how i can use the search here control f click control f in your keyboard and you can see that here we can search by a string selector or expert so let us say here for this gmail anchor tag or the link the class name is gb underscore f if i'll just write gb underscore f and if i'll press enter so there are four places where gb underscore f are found the first place is in this css the second place is again in this css the third place is corresponding to this gmail and the fourth place is corresponding to this image so the same um, class name gb underscore f is basically used by this two element here in this page so this is a simple textual search now let us come to the selectors so what are selectors let us come back to our drawing board so this is our uh, <clears throat> dom example you can pause this video and maybe look at it okay what is selector so selector is basically in css cascading style sheets we can define selectors okay and then we can declare what css properties or or you know uh, what kind of uh, kind of decoration or css we should see when this selector is met or is uh, you know put up with any of the html element so in this case all the paragraph tags will share this css or this or this you know decoration that font size should be 1.2 em css selector can be you know in many types so i'm just presenting very basic examples like dot here represents the class name so this first one basically represents the class name register the second one without any dot or any of the you know uh, hash or something this basically represents the tag name so this represents all the table elements in that page hash represents the id so this represents unique underscore id the id name with unique underscore id okay this is square bracket and inside this 
some key is equal to some value this represents basically any of the element which is having this attribute name and whose value is login body greater than sign nav this represents basically any of the body tag which is having a direct child please note this greater than sign represents direct child okay it means the nav the nav tag should be the direct child of the body tag but if there is no such greater than sign then it means that this child can be in any of the um, uh, child tree of this body tag so inside the body we can have div inside the div we can have another div inside the div we have nav so this kind of you know um, tree structure will satisfy body space nav but it will not satisfy body greater than sign now okay so these are some of the types like how we can define the selectors okay so we can use these selectors also in order to search certain elements so let us go back to our browser developer console so we will again take this example of gmail okay so now here we know that there is a div okay and inside the div there is a a so i will search with div and then greater than sign and then a so you see here it is found that there are 21 places where this particular condition is satisfied like div is having a direct child with anchor element so if i press next next we can see it basically if we will try to uh, you know kind of uh, <clears throat> Uh, kind of you know more narrow down or more specific about the selectors you can definitely point out so the third way to search here is xpath xpath is nothing but a basically uh, representing a tree structure or basically re representing the tree flow or representing a particular element in a tree flow kind of a structure okay so let us again come back to the same example of gmail if i just here click on this gmail and inspect its element okay and right click here copy there is a option for copy xpath i'll just copy it now it is copied in my clipboard i can just control v paste it so this is the xpath corresponding to that gmail okay so you see only one element is found which satisfied this if i just mouse over on this it is the gmail so you see there are certain uh, <clears throat> Uh, way to write the x path so here i'll just explain it this double slash represents anything from the root like any part of this tree down tree is starting from the root okay a star represents yeah sorry double slash star represents any part of the tree is starting from the root a square bracket and then at the rate key is equal to some value represents the attribute and the value okay and then slash slash represents basically the flow in the tree so basically it is looking for any of the elements which is satisfying which is having the id gb and inside that go to the div inside that go to the first div you see there can be many divs but go to the first index like after the zeroth index go to the first index inside that go to another div inside that again go to the first index div inside that go to the anchor element so you see this kind of flow will be unique there can be multiple elements satisfying the same okay so in that case we will be getting two results for this search so this is how we we'll look for the x path so for example let us say if i am looking for a class um which is gb underscore f so we know that this this is satisfied by the two elements so you see two elements one is gmail and other is obviously images images right so this is how the x path works coming back to our drawing board now we will look about the box model property what is box model uh, property or box model representation of an element is it says that the css of any of the element okay is basically um, analyzed or you know imagined or kind of visualized in terms of box model so we can see it as 
here the innermost part is basically the content and after that comes the padding so we can you know design the uh, sorry we can uh, provide the css property for padding like you know the width of the padding the height of the padding you know the padding um, color or, or what how we want to represent the padding after the padding comes the border same thing with the border the quality of the border the color and the weight and blah blah all those then the margin comes so basically this part this this model tells us that okay any content if for example we have a div okay sorry we have let us say a paragraph inside the paragraph if we are writing hello world but this is let us say the content of the hello world okay but we want that i want a border around it okay border with let us say a green color okay so let us say green color and i want that my border should be 2 pixel away in the top 5 pixel away in the bottom and let us say 1 pixel away in the right side and 1 pixel away in the sorry right side so this is this will be my padding and this will be my basically green color border now i want that no other element should come near to my this border um, by let us say four pixel okay so what i can do is let us select the black color here and i will just you know select the margin top margin bottom margin left and margin right everything as four pixel so this is my margin so this is my content c this is my padding this is my border and this is my margin so in initial days i used to confuse with this uh, structure so i used to re remember it as pbm pbm because my favorite dish if i go anywhere is paneer butter masala so i used to remember it as pbm okay so anyways let us move forward now we will see what is console tab but just before that let us go back here and also see for example if i select this this particular element I can see all the CSS related to this element. You see all the CSS related to that. And also I can go to that particular CSS using this, uh, you know, CSS uh, like file link is given here. Okay. So I can also change this CSS kind of, I can perform the crude operation. Crude means C-R-U-D. C for create, R for um, <clears throat> retrieve. Uh, we cannot retrieve here. So basically it could be C-U-D, could. So C for create, U for update, and D for delete. So basically, if let us say I want to show this my Gmail in red color just for testing how it will look. So I will just write color is equal to, you know, red. You see? So all the elements satisfying this class name GB underscore G or GB underscore F will be shown in red. Now, if let us say I want to delete this, so unselect it or Maybe you know just delete it permanently, not permanently. Basically, this is in testing, testing structure. So just delete it. Okay. <laughs> so this is how we can basically online. Uh, you know, we can just um, test some of the CSS things. Now let us go back to our console tab. So what is console tab? Console tab is nothing but the inline editor or the interpreter. So as you know that each of the browser basically have a javascript engine in them okay and that javascript engine creates the document object model and provides us the utility to change or manipulate that document object model through this <coughs> console tab okay so basically console tab is a kind of a, a channel between the browser and a user to interact with the javascript engine of that browser okay so we can use that engine for you know running our small javascript code or we can use that engine to basically access the document object model of the page okay or we can use that engine to access the windows or the document object of that page okay also we can use that uh, use that console tab for seeing any of the console logs or any of the warnings or the errors that is coming through any of the codes running in that instance or in that tab of the javascript engine okay let us quickly go to our um, um, browser develop browser developer console this is our console here we can clean it up okay and also um, here it will show that okay what are my 
uh, you know, extensions. I have installed several extensions to increase my productivity. So here it is showing that, you know, the extension choices. And then here I can uh, select the custom level. Like I just want to see errors and information from the scripts, okay? If I select verbose, then um, it will show lots of more details to me. If I select warning, then it will also tell the warnings uh, which are coming from my scripts and all. So here, if I'll write just a document, okay? I can see the document object model of this page. So here, basically this is the whole document object model. Okay, so document represents the UI, the DOM of this page. Similar to that, we have window. So window represents basically the, the, the complete window of this tab. So it will also include this scroll bar, my mouse pointer and, and many such utilities. Also, please remember the window is the, the parent or, the, or the, the upper most part of this object, okay? So win document is one of the child of this window. So I can write it as window.document also, and it will return me the same as what I can do with the direct document, okay? So this is our console tab. I can run here a small snippets like where x is equal to 10 and I can write like console dot um, log x. So basically I can run any of the, you know, JavaScript code, the small codes here. So it is kind of interpreter and also, you know, kind of a way to access the document object model. You can do lots more, but let's keep it basic. Now we will come to the network tab, okay? So in the network tab, what happens is, network tabs, basically we can filter for the resources fetch. So let us say if, please note, I'm going to refresh this page, okay? So in the network tab, this is about the, yeah, in the network tabs, this is about the recording our network you know, flow. This is about clearing the network, clearing this console of the network, okay, logs. Your filter, you can test it with, but the main important thing is disable cache. So if I have selected this, I think by default in incognito, it is always selected. So disable cache is basically for disabling any of the caching in this page. So what it will do is it will always fetch the fresh version of your website for you, okay? So it is always better to fetch the most latest or recent version of your codes. So when you are developing something or writing some code and testing it in this browser developer console, it is always a good idea to select this disable cache, okay? So let us see so this. If you select this all, you will see all kinds of resources fetched. XHR is only for XML HTTP response request like REST APIs or the data fetch. JS is for the script, CSS for the CSS files. Images is for basically images, here audio, video, font, document, and all those, okay? So let us say if I if I you know refresh this page. So what will happen is I will see that you know um, all the flows for this page one by one. Oh, okay. So it is right now selected as XHR. So I am seeing only XHR. If I select all, it will show me all the resources. So what is waterfall model chart here is this colorful chart kind of things which you see here. Okay, they are called waterfall model. So in this, we can see that how much time it takes, where it has originated this, and what was the destination for this request, and you know, different kinds of details. You can uh, test it on your own and maybe learn more, okay? So for example, how much time the DNS lookup took, okay? How much time it was queued and uh, at what time it started, and uh, you know, all these kind of details in terms, in terms of the time taken, okay? So if let us say I select XHR, so only one data is given. So here, if you select it, you'll see the details, like what are the headers sent with this HTTP GET request. It was a GET request. I have successfully received the response. So status code is 200. And there are remote address. This is the remote address on which my request is hitting. So basically this is the IP address of the Google server, local Google server. It is 443 port number. It means it is running on the SSL. So basically this lock sign, which you are seeing, it represents the SSL certificate with this. So those things. So we will maybe cover those details in some other videos. Here we have response headers, request header, and you know, all kinds of query parameters for this particular page, preview responses, lots of more details. Okay, you can play with it and learn more. So this is how the network tabs can be used. We have just seen waterfall time chart. 
how we can disable the cache, how we can analyze the request and response. So coming once again on that analyzing it, we can select any of the request and see its header, preview, response, and all. Let us say if I have select images. So here you see I have uh, around four images here in my page. So one is UI image, but that can't be previewed. Maybe it is in some different format and all, not in basic PNG and all. Okay. So this is about the network tab. Now coming to the source tab. In the source tab, it is for you know kind of uh, you can bring your own code here and kind of this code will run with each of your page. So if let us say you can, uh, just give me a second. Okay, sorry for that. Yeah. So you can basically import some of your codes here and then that code will be run on your page. Okay. So this is how this source tab works. Also, in the source tab, what you can do is you can select these pages and you can see what are all the scripts or the JavaScript codes which have come with this page. Okay, so these are all the JavaScript codes which have come with this Google home page. So you can also browse with them and maybe you know see the logics or whatever, but generally it is not that much useful. It is useful when, let us say, in your code, in your some script, some error happens and you click on that script then you will be you know, taken to this source tab and that particular page where the error occurred, you can see that page. You can also prettify or pretty print your page, which is in minified version, okay? Or a non-debugging version and see it in a better formatted way and then maybe find the bug. So that is all I have in this video. I have taken, I think uh, around 20 minutes. So let us close this um, uh, video. If you have any doubt, please comment in the comment section. Please subscribe to that small channel I have just started. So I hope you had liked it. So thank you once again. Have a nice day.